Return on capital employed is one of the most important financial ratios used in business. It's often shortened down and referred to as ROCE, and it's used to measure the profitability of a business and how efficiently it uses its capital. In other words, how much profit the business returns as a percentage of every one pound of capital that is invested into the business. If a business had a return on capital employed of 10%, this means for every one pound of capital employed in the business, 10p of profit is being generated. And for this reason, it's a very popular financial ratio, especially for investors. If you've ever watched Dragon's Den, this is one of the key financial ratios that the Dragons will use when deciding whether to invest in a business. The capital employed in a business can come from various sources, which include long-term borrowing, such as loans, mortgages, and debentures, shareholder investments, and from retained profits. Let's now take a look at how to calculate the return on capital employed for a business. The formula is operating profit divided by capital employed multiplied by 100. You may have noticed how I put all net profit in brackets. This is because the return on capital employed figure can also be calculated by dividing the net profit before interest and tax by the capital employed and multiplying the answer by 100. But this all depends on the qualification that you are studying. So just ask your teacher to clarify if you're unsure which one you should use in the calculation. For the purpose of this video, we're going to stick with the operating profit figure. Either way, you will find the profit figure that you need for the calculation in the income statement of the business. But if the capital employed figure is not given to you in the scenario, you may need to do a quick calculation before you can complete the return on capital employed formula. If you need to calculate what the capital employed is for a business, you need to add together its total equity and its non-current liabilities, all of which can be found in the business's statement of financial position. Total equity includes a business's retained profit, reserves, and share capital, and non-current liabilities refers to the long-term debts of the business, such as any loans, mortgages, bonds, or debentures that the business has taken. Let's now take a look at an example and have a go at calculating the return on capital employed for two competing businesses. On your screen now, you have some key information about two businesses. This includes their total equity, any non-current liabilities, and their operating profit. You've got Tom's Tops on the left, and his rival, Jasmine's Jackets, on the right. Based on this information, calculate the return on capital employed for both businesses and evaluate what this means. If you want to, you can pause your screen now and have an attempt at the scenario on your own, or just wait a couple of seconds and follow me as I work through the example. We will start with Tom's Tops on the left. It was an operating profit of £600. We simply need to divide this by the capital employed, but this figure isn't given to us directly in this scenario. So we now need to add the total equity of £850 and the non-current liabilities of £450 together giving us a capital employed figure of £1,300. So for Tom's Tops, that's an operating profit of £600 divided by a capital employed of £1,300 multiplied by 100, meaning that the business has a return on capital employed of 46.15%. So for every £1 of capital that's invested into Tom's Tops, the business is returning a profit of 46p. Moving on to Jasmine's Jackets on the right, who has an operating profit of £750. But just like we did for Tom's Tops, we need to calculate the capital employed figure separately. So that's a total equity of £1,050, plus non-current liabilities of £900, which gives us a capital employed figure of £1,950. So for Jasmine's Jackets, that's an operating profit of £750, divided by capital employed of £1,950 multiplied by 100, meaning the business has a return on capital employed of 38.46%. So for every £1 of capital that's invested into Jasmine's Jackets, the business is returning 38.46p of profit. Now that we've completed the calculations, we can evaluate what this information means for the two rival businesses. The great news for Jasmine's Jackets is that she's making more profit than Tom's Tops, as her business had an operating profit of £750 in comparison to Tom's Tops, £600. But she has also employed a lot more capital into a business. Jasmine's Jackets currently has £1,950 of capital employed in comparison to Tom's Tops, £1,300 of capital employed. Meaning that in this scenario, 
although Tom's Tops is less profitable overall, he is using the capital that's been invested into his business more efficiently than Jasmine is in hers. This is because the higher the return on capital employed percentage, the better it is for the business. But once calculated, a business's return on capital employed percentage can be analysed further and compared to the business's return on capital employed in previous years to see how it is changing over time, the return on capital employed of its competitors or even against industry averages to see if the business is achieving above or below the typical returns of its competitors. And it can also be compared against risk-free rates of return, such as interest rates being offered in a bank or a building society. By making these comparisons, the return on capital employed figure is put into context and a more accurate judgment about how efficiently a business is using its capital can be made. If a business wanted to improve its return on capital employed, it can employ several strategies which are focused on increasing revenue or decreasing its cost of sales to improve profitability. Or the business could look to reduce its capital employed figure by reducing its non-current liabilities such as any long-term debt.